Oh, look at this. It's a vinyl. So, I'm a digital kid and honestly, I've basically no experience with vinyl. <laughs> like, my parents had some discs and a turntable, but as a kid, we weren't allowed to touch it. And now having tried vinyl, I can totally see why. It's really fragile stuff. Like, once you scratch it, that's it. It's scratched. But, like, it was really exciting to be a full-grown man and get to experience it properly for the first time and, like, really appreciate it. And I'd been building up to this for a while. I mean, it took me two years to piece together my speaker rig and a nice turntable would really complement it. Please try to ignore the Apple II. So, in just excited anticipation, like, before I even had the turntable, I popped down to my JBs to grab some of my favourite albums. Oh, gosh, those big, beautiful album covers. They, they really get me. But now I needed a player. So, I wanted to get something pretty nice something that I thought that I could keep forever you know I wouldn't think I'd need to change it at any point the only issue is I had no idea what I was doing so I popped down to addicted to audio here in Adelaide and they gave me the tour and it's moments like this where actually going to the store is just the best because I could ask questions right there and get answers right there but honestly Google searches are worse than ever and buying online sucks now anyways like you know couriers just stop it but I settled on an avid ingenium not cheap, and hilariously described as an entry model unit. Shows you how far those avids can go. So there's so many different turntables you can get. You can have fully automatic ones where it's almost like a CD. Like, you could actually select tracks. Yeah, just next song please. But the avid is as manual as it gets. I wanted the raw experience. This guy's so raw, like the motor and the chassis are not connected, it's just the belt that links them. It's to keep all vibrations away from the disc because like, if you have like a normal closed lid one and you just put the album cover on top, that can cause it to skip. It is that sensitive. Sorry for how dark and gloomy it is in my cabin here, but you know, there's no on and off button. It's literally a switch just to turn the electric motor on or not. I actually love how simple it is. But if you tried to just plug it into your speaker rig, it would have no volume at all. You need a phono preamp, yep. We ain't done spending money yet. It's because vinyl is mixed in a really specific way in order to make it work, so you need those specific amps to boost the signal. But I got it all plumbed in, nice and tucked away. I got my discs of good noises, and now it all boils down to this question. The question you've been yelling at the screen this whole time, completely disregarding all the information I've thus given. Does it sound better than digital? No. No, it doesn't. But it's not that simple. A lot of stigma against digital music goes back to its earliest days. Remember, MP3 players were invented in like 1997, which wasn't that long ago, really. And at the time, digital music was an enigma, like whole books just explaining MP3s. And back then, yeah, MP3s sounded like garb. So heavily compressed, with out-of-date ways of doing it. I have whole piles of vintage MP3 players with their original music still on them, and they sound pretty crap. But nowadays, with just how insane microprocessors are, like smartphones are more powerful than laptops were five years ago. We have supercomputers in our pocket, and that like unpacking huge, stinky, lossless digital files is a piece of cake now. These tiny nuggets can pull it off now. And with over 20 years practice compressing music, we've gotten really good at it. I feel we really do take for granted just how good digital music actually sounds. Oh, then vinyl sounds like crap then. Ha, huh? I knew it. Next person that tells me vinyl sounds great, oh, I'm gonna tell them they've been smoking too much cabbage, mate. Well, well that's not true either, because vinyl sounds bloody excellent. <laughs> it, it really does, honestly. Oh my puck cell! In order for me to notice, right, I had the digital version and the vinyl version matched to the second, A being on my amplifier going like, vinyl, digital, vinyl, digital, and it was paired at the exact same point, right? Honestly, it's the very top and the very bottom end that's missing. And like, by the way, switching backwards and forwards like that, and you know, I have to do it with headphones when reviewing them too. It's the worst way to listen to music. And it's why reviews can actually be a bit of a drag to make. Like switching back and forth between equipment like that can make you hate thousand dollar headphones because of a subtle difference you'd never notice even if you waited just half an hour before switching. It's why I do have some headphones I haven't done videos on. I don't want to ruin them. <laughs> but the first time that I put one of these vinyl records on, I sat back on the 
couch and I couldn't believe that a needle was scratching it out for me. It feels like magic, yet it's one of the oldest ways we've listened back to pre-recorded anything. And it sounds stinking great, it really does. And a lot of the quality of sound you're gonna get, I mean just like digital, it's the quality of the recording that is the biggest bit. I have some old Top of the Pops albums here from way back and they sound terrible, like worse than old MP3s. But then like proper releases are pretty amazing. But now I'm sure a lot of you folks are muttering, but I've switched between digital and vinyl and I prefer vinyl, then like, why then? Well, music is mixed differently for vinyl because yeah, it's a needle that has to vibrate within grooves to make it work. So the bass is centered, i.e. it's not going from left to right, it stays in the middle. You can make it jump left and right, but it's way harder for the needle it has to make bigger sweeps, which can cause skipping, and apparently it's harder to make the, the discs themselves. So you really might just enjoy the specific mix vinyl releases get, and that's cool, but I've been using the, the Avid for like three months now. I mean, it's why reviews take so long. I really do like to soak in the experience. And what I've realized is it's not about sound quality. It's about vibe quality. Because we're in an age where everything is just instantly accessible now. Like shows, movies, music, mate, food. You can just have it immediately now. You can be having a poo while watching The Incredibles and ordering dinner to be delivered. What an age we live in. But it also means that we can just be burdened by choice. All right, as soon as something stops being interesting, it's so tempting just to skip over a bit, put something else on. But anytime I put a record on, I find myself listening to the whole album front to back. Well, I've gone through all the trouble of getting a setup, you know, and then the set the arm down so it doesn't skip off the edge and make that horrible noise. And so once it's going, I don't even want to touch it. So it's fussiness to me is a huge benefit. I don't take time off very well. I always think that I need to be doing something, but when a disc is playing, I would happily sit and just enjoy all of it. When using digital, it's just so easy to press pause and get back to work, eh? No wonder why it's making a comeback, you know, cause humans are weird and we're just animals after all. I mean, look at fidget cubes, they do nothing. Yet we just love how they feel. It's fun to fidget with something. And then here comes vinyl, which lets you hold your music. So this isn't the only turntable I got. I know most people People aren't gonna be grabbing something like the Avid, which really is for enthusiasts. It's expensive, very fragile. Like you have to put it back into its box to move it anywhere, and it's completely manual. While I was in JB's, I made sure to grab the classic staple. An Auto Technica, even at this price, it has a built-in preamp. You can just plug this straight into some little speakers. It's even automatic. Watch it. Place a disc, press play, off you go. <laughs> and it's nuts how great this cheap guy sounds. I can see for most people this would be perfect. All the fun of vinyl, but with none of the huge costs. And a lot of the scary taken out. Place a disc, press play. But I mean, don't get me wrong, the Avid with the Moon preamp definitely has the edge in sound. You know, you'd expect that. And if you've been thinking about getting into vinyl, mate, it's the best time to get into it. Cause I'm telling you, modern discs are so much better than the old ones. I've inherited my folks old vinyl stash. And you know, back then it was a mainstream thing, meaning they'll try to make as much money as they could by making them as cheap as possible and they are crazy thin like vinyl nowadays is for enthusiasts so the discs are way thicker like it's good and yes vinyl is expensive but like i don't use it to discover music all the discs i have are my all-time favorite albums ones i'll happily listen to on repeat ones that I'd love to experience differently. I don't need to have all my music in vinyl, but there's something special about being able to hold my favorite album. So while it technically doesn't beat digital, it certainly delivers an experience that digital just simply can't touch. It's fiddly, it's fussy, it's expensive. You can ruin a disc with no effort at all. But then it comes with these beautiful, fold out, <laughs> like, you know, it's it's beautiful. This really is for enthusiasts. And then watching that disc go around is mesmerizing. It's almost like a campfire. You just want to sit and be around it. Even with my crazy flat players and modern headphones, I, I'm adoring vinyl. It's absolutely part of my routine now. And you know, I hope a whole bunch of you get into it too. Well, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Huge thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names right here, because my $1 a month, I do it to videos. It's the least I can do. I keep saying it. You guys make this channel work. I'm currently being bombarded with advertisers, like saying, please put sponsor spots in your ads. And it's fun telling them no. 
know. So thank you for giving me that superpower. But for you $1 patrons, mate, I'm sure you just couldn't stop looking at that Apple II. Well, I'm going to flick it on and see what it does. So thanks so much, and mate, I'll see you all next time. Frank, Frank, come over here. C come on, we can't do the thing we've rehearsed until you're looking at me. Frank, the camera's over here. Frank? Oi. Oi, Frank, oi. Frank. God, every time.